Welcome to another Wagtail Live Coding Hangout. Today we'll be working on the Western Friend website. We've got a basically pull request in progress here. Document, let's go ahead and link this here. 541. Hmm. I don't know why it's not showing up. It's correct, 541. Oh, I see, I have a typo. So, <clears throat> just connecting the dots here. What we're going to do is try to finish up this pull request. I've written an importer script and several um, user interface uh, definitions so we get this new content type into the Wagtail admin. What we're doing is importing meeting documents and each of those documents has several fields, a title, uh, an author, just the meeting, and it's I needed to run another importer to get all these meetings into the system. So we've done that. Document type and publication date, as well as the body. So this importer here will will run. Uh, the issue now is that I need to add a link to this publishing meeting. So I need to open a model. the documents and the meeting document has a field here called publishing meeting in my importer I'm not checking that publishing meeting I want to do that early I want to fail early on these first we check if the document exists by looking at a by Drupal node ID now oh, fail early Pretty close. All right, let me look at the data. But I believe it's just the, that's a good guess. Let me get this imported. Using Copilot here. Language server was smart enough to know that app is not part of the path. Module path. So I've got the CSV here, but now with CSV editor, it has a column publishing meeting. What's the column name? Resize that. Lagging a bit. Hmm. There we go. Publishing meeting Drupal ID. So this is the field name. Ooh, so close. It actually did a really good job guessing that. And honestly, that's my fault for <laughs> not being consistent here. 
in my export data, I've got a Drupal node ID. So every entity in Drupal has a unique ID and I should have just done Drupal node ID. I was just kind of being a little bit more concise there. So we're going to grab it if we can get that. Uh, let me see here for a second. Uh, We'll continue on in the let's continue. I think the git should return one record or none. Can get the docs up here. And then what we need to do when we create this. That's correct. That should be correct. Well, I don't need to. That's fine. It's good. So, so now we're going to try just to run this whole script. Up to this point. And do the redirect later. What that does is it kind of sets up a meeting instance, parses the data, attaches it as fields to the instance. Three. No, two. This is the first time I've run this importer. Uh, I had put it on hold. All right. Okay, so I think we're getting an error here. Well, I'm trying to look up a meeting. By Drupal node ID, right? Which line did that fail on? Hmm. So let's find the meeting model. Hmm. Go. Did I do that? And all of these ones, Drupal author ID. All right, these I wrote a while back. Drupal author ID is what I used. I'll go with that. It's okay to have a little inconsistencies, but they add up, so I'm really careful. All right, Drupal author ID. To use the same uh, vocabulary for the same thing, I try to be consistent. Okay, it looks like it's going to parse through it. Now we'll just kind of get an audit of the data to see if there's anything off kilter there. Yep. 
Yes, yeah, so we'll try catch this. Mm -hmm. And that's correct. Who knows there? Mm. We can't set it to none. I'm going to see if it would suggest something else. Uh, so I'll need to, to skip this. I'll need to break out of the, this iteration and just give myself some data there. Cool. So we know there's a little bit of an issue with our data. So by logging this out, I can follow up with a content audit on the main website. None, huh? So there's a row with none, huh? I was looking at the wrong column. Okay, so there's a category missing there. Yeah, maybe it would actually help if I give myself. bit more to go by. I'll save it here, but the data needs to change on the website as well. Just updating that on the website quick. 
one document. And since it had in the name that it was an epistle, I could just That's fixed. The importer runs without issue. Uh, I do want to run it one more time and find this missing meeting here. See if there's something that data I can fix with that. But I should just run these. Mm, I'm going to have to make this. I guess it's fast enough just to get an integrity error back. All right, 46, 939. Schedule Drupal node ID, ah, publishing. Empty meeting. Okay, I can fix that as well. I am schedule of interest groups. Easy to fix. It was the same document somehow. Didn't get the right words, but now it's actually on the site is correct. So maybe we, my export could be a little bit out of sync. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fixed in the site, so that's good. All right, so I'll fix that one manually in the data as well. We'll run this again. This time, actually persisting the data. So what I need to do is just uh, clear that filter. Hmm. Find one that's published by P. Yeah. And the meeting ID is All right, our data in good shape. Now, when I start saving these, at the point of saving, we could get some different errors. Oops. I guess that whole block can be. All right, let's run it. Save that. Dang it.
I would just fail at Ah. Uh, uh-huh. So when it doesn't have that category, it fails. I do. Well, if I rerun it now, because I fixed the category and all of them, so I fixed the data, so that's just <laughs> Huh. I don't understand. I fixed the dang day. That's one bit annoying thing. Data, all of them should have. Hmm. It's an epistle. All right, data fixed locally and at least I think it's fixed locally and on the website. No, no. <sighs> Which one?
Hmm. I could just make that code resilient, but I want to fix the dang data. Where are you? Sneaky. Why didn't the meeting get fixed? Here's the one. Hmm. It's a bit of a dip for different one, but we'll just go ahead and Classified as a Brittany Pistol. Since we don't have another type for that. Oh my gosh. Is this not saving or something? Oh man, what a piece of crap. unfortunate all right you can see i'm getting a bit frustrated here <sighs> libre office i'm getting distracted that makes it a bit more difficult
That should do it. All right. Luckily, the importer is checking for the existence of these documents first, and then take some time there. Hmm. Wow. What the heck is going on? Save as. Save, yeah. Replace. All right, so command S didn't work there. One document, and then it, uh, I think that should do it. Try it again. Oh my goodness. Meeting documents. Meeting documents. I'm literally editing it here. I'm, what's going on? Is there something else that's got a lock on it? What the heck? And which one was it? I think that covered all the unknown categories. Interesting thing here. Well, I'll just wait for it to finish, but uh, it's pretty much looking good. Let's see if I got results. Well, it is a license in place. Okay. Cool, there we go. All right, let's run this over. Now, we go to community meeting documents leave this form got all of our documents imported so I have to create a couple of templates I think you live I should get a template error oh yes so we need to create this and create this meeting document.html there though documents And I think it's too much the same template. But 
Save. Good. Now what I want to do is in document index page. And it's again probably gonna follow the same format as the public board document index page. It's not a whole lot. It was tricky to figure out, but I had copilot did the thing. Good thing. So, so. Save, yes, did I? There we go. Uh, ba 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 ba. <laughs> it's actually almost there, almost there. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Oh, this is going to be a tricky one. Here, I need to look at Western Friend, the actual website. <laughs> it's not as easy as I was hoping. So if we go to community, meeting documents, basically. All right, so we got hmm, year, meeting. OK, so the year, and then the meeting, and then the category. Hmm. Hey, need some water. Do this though. I'll be right back and grab some water. Ah, didn't mute. Oh, I wasn't muted earlier. That would be no good. All right, so first let's get them grouped by year. Then let's just let's just.
there. Hopefully it won't. That will. Okay. I think it's not going to be okay. Just wrap it in comments. This is going to be the final section. So we'll. Uh, I'll save myself some hassle here and get. I'll put a property on here that just returns the publication year. Can I do that? In Dict dictionary sort. Can you? It's it's a property. And pipe that to a string format. I'm asking too much here. It's heavy. Oh, I didn't get anything out of it. Well, 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 let's see where did I go wrong. That's the correct field. That is the correct field. Losing that. So that just worked. Whoa, that was good. That works now. Good stuff. And let me see here. I don't think that's it, man. I don't know. Uh, is it a filter? Yes, yeah, a date is the filter. That's right. It's the filter. Ah. Mm, mm, mm. I put my filter in the wrong place. That makes sense. Uh, regroup. Something. By start date. By. Then. By you. Tell it to format that. Yes. Yes. 
Filter goes right on the thing it's attaching to. Oh my goodness. I've got some stuff that I am not using. Slow. But it, it worked. Oh. We probably want it to be reverse chronological. And a database index here is probably starting to make sense if it's not already there. What do we got here? You. Takes a little bit over a second on the quest is a heavy thing. Let me try adding it. We're sorting by that. I suspect that's. We're probably a little relying on Python to do dick sorts happening in Python. I'll at least do the order thing, order by. In SQL. Yeah, let's do that. What we'll do is we'll hop over to index page, meeting document index page right here. We'll Perhaps if I sort set this default sort on the model. That's that's exactly what I was trying to do. Drop this. Let's see what happens. That did work. I think it did work on purpose. Now, by accident of the import order or something like that. The other thing is to add this index. Add the index. How do we add the index? Index? Yes. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Copilot. And then Django rebuild index. Now do I have to run a migration there? Mm 
I don't think these documents are in reverse chronological order in the spreadsheet, but I could be mistaken. They are. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That could be the mis uh, the reason the page sorted like it did. Well, oh, wait. Instead of using page children, I'm probably really optimizing this when I don't really need to be. Oh, come on. That's right. Right. Super cool how it does that. Really useful. I hope that we don't kill this with copyright. Hello, Absolute. Welcome to the stream. Hey, was that faster? That's a heck of a lot faster. Boom. Database indexing, not relying on the template to sort. That is like ready to go. However, we're going to get two more layers of nesting here where we're going to be using Python to sort over these. It may be that I want to do an aggregation database so i don't know those are always a bit challenging to do multi-level aggregations kind of want to try a bit when i try those but let's go ahead and continue uh, so what we're going to do is regroup Documents by specific um, documents by type. No, no, no. Year meeting type. And this is a foreign key. And it's going to have to be an order by. Okay. Gotta read that. I'd do that in the other template, I forget. Dictionary sort. This will be slow again. Dictionary sort comes on the documents. Ah, uh, yeah, specific publishing meeting.
Uh, okay, so this is now meeting in document by meeting. Let's just see if this works. Then we'll come back to it. Oh, that's actually correct. Well, no, it's not correct. Quite, but we do H3. Right there. Not yet, not yet, Copilot. Hey. Interesting. Worked for one year. Absolute. Any tips on coding? I'm starting to learn again. Oh, yeah, very good. Good thing to start. Well, yeah, what kind of a, um, it starts with your inspiration. What are you thinking about building? Or what, what are you interested in first? Let's start there and then I can give you some tips about like possible paths forward. What are your interests? It should start with an interest. Now, oh, this is weird, why? Okay, so for each of these documents by year, uh, each of these documents, you like helping people? Yeah, that's quite a good ethos so how do you think your coding would be useful to help people what what would you be using it or how would you be using it first start there like what would you be making with code or how would your code be impacting people's lives now it's slow again and it's only working on one for some weird reason, 2020 of all places. This could be part of it. I could be shadowing that. <laughs> you want to send a good message, so you have to send a good message to help people, yeah? Well, then you could uh, look for, as a start, um, look at how people, how we send messages, <laughs> literally like what kind of media we use to communicate. And start building something there. Looks like this split's not even, let's make sure that's correct. Okay. Huh. I think I'm going to have to go to the database aggregation approach here. That's never been pleasant. I don't think Django is like really well positioned for data, database aggregation. At least my, my understanding actually, I should say just They're doing like like literal aggregations, like summarizing things and 
but I need grouping. That's what I'm concerned about, grouping, not so much the aggregating part of it. So yeah, and there's a lot of ways you can um, use code to uh, do social media st stuff probably. Well, one, one thing you could check out is, um, hmm. The way we're interfacing and interacting with computers is changing pretty drastically right now. Like for a long time, many like several decades, we've been ta uh, interacting with computers uh, using commands like type, written text, teletype, and things like that. And we're still doing that. And I'm just putting a bunch of commands together and commands and commands, and I'm like nesting commands and I'm not testing anything. That's, that's not here nor there. But um, the the so the interface there is text. It's sort of a human language, but in these cases, our language is bent. It's a little bit twisted into syntax to meet the computer's needs. Computers and humans are significantly different and have different needs. Um, and I'm writing Python. It's a high level language, so it's kind of closer to English, but still it has like weird things like it's, a, it's still a computer language. But the interface is changing now. We have these um, a whole discipline, in fact, called natural language processing. And you could learn about this in Python. But it's just a field of computer science that we're learning how to tell computers to, hey, this is this is how humans speak and write. Uh, how do we work with humans in our as close to possible as our native uh, capabilities, native needs, natural language, natural needs, and this branch of computer science has then merged with these. Um, Neural networks. Recently, in the last few years. And essentially, the um, computers, they've built these huge models, or large language models. I'm trying to say chat GPT without saying chat GPT. And basically, though, these large language models are allowing us to do pretty extraordinary things uh, and nonsensical things, but uh, about creating, creating new things from language and using natural language, even spoken language. Uh, a lot of the code here has actually been written for me by, in fact, I, I'm going to try something here. Um, by a, a large language model called GitHub Copilot. And you can use these language models. You can explore them on Hugging Face. It has a playground and some of these that you can just chat with. Um, let's see. So if we go to models, mm, I'm not signed in here. I've got a couple of favorites, but uh, let's search models and chat. most popular that was not quite let me hop into my other browser real quick. I'll just see if I can find this one uh, stable vicuna chat UI Hugging, hugging chat, chat UI. So let's just take a quick uh, gander at this. 
how these work here's the here's the link here uh, you have to sign in to to use it but if you uh, sign in there you can actually start chatting with it so one second Okay, I have to double click that. All right, now we're back into the game. So this is hugging chat. Uh, so let's ask some hugging chat something. Feeling like 10 today, so I can hang out with my little friend Ava, who was 10 last week. She's growing up in such a beautiful human inside and out, just like her mommy Jasmine did. She's 47 years young. Like I say, aging just mark is just marks on your face looking at life through jaded eyes. So where did she grow and learn that beauty? One hell of a great mother, of course, technology skills. Well, I'm old fashioned, but even though studying tech could technology pretty hard these days, I still have faith in understanding her more than most kids could ever imagine because yep these mumbo jumbos so it's basically uh spewing randomness but let's see What are some practical steps someone can take to help people? Using code. The goal is to send a good message. Let's see if this one will come up with anything. <laughs> yeah, it did kind of make sense. It's uh basically what it's good at is kind of making sense it's like something that somebody might say so yeah give some good advice in general on how to be helpful How can somebody learn to program computers so they can help others and send a good message? Learning to program computers can be a complex process, but there are many resources available to help individuals at all levels start their journey into programming. For beginners, free courses and tutorials on websites like Code Academy, Unimi, Coursera, edX, Free Code Camp, Khan Academy, etc. teach HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which provide basic web development concepts and allow the user to create simple web pages. Additionally, online coding boot camps and certification programs exist for students who want to quickly upskill on multiple front end, back end languages, usually consisting of JavaScript courses, Python, etc. That's how you spell etc. Surely you may refer to them as full stack developers. That's kind of interesting. So that's a good point. And it won't let me do the whole chat there. But uh, the medium is the message. So you want to send a good message, think about the medium. And the medium right now, we're, like we're hanging out, is the web. And people who program on the web or program for the web are called web developers. Boom. Full stack developers? Yeah, sure. Front end, back end? Sure. Generally, it's just web developers. You kind of find a niche, find what's your interest there, uh, and learn web development. Hugging, hugging chat. Please tell me. Tell me. 
10 steps that a new programmer person new programmer can take to learn web development so another cool thing is this is interfacing in my natural language and it's giving me personal assistance writing javascript code validating email data with regular expressions oh during form submission ah implementing responsive layout controls exploring browser developer tools like chrome dev tools firefox getting familiarized <laughs> yeah cool beans uh this is this actually there's better performing large language models than hugging chat this is a good one though it's free to use doesn't hurt to check out let me double check real quick over here i've got another one yeah i don't want to uh, go on too long about it but i've just been really kind of fa fascinated by these um lately stable vicuna stable m tuned alpha chat i think was a little bit better model this one you don't ha i think you can use without signing in or maybe you have to sign in let's try this one okay thank you for your time hugging chat ava and and jasmine was it j-a-z-m-i-n No problem please come again ah model end okay <laughs> interesting it's uh is there a person there so here's this one's a little bit better i think check this one out and of course you can try the um chat gpt in several interfaces uh hugging face i don't that hugging face doesn't have chat gpt they have other uh language models hi there Hello, how can I help you today? Let's just ask the same question because I think this one gave me better results previously in these types of tasks. Please tell me. 10 steps. Please tell me how. Uh, yeah, 10, 10, 10 steps. Yeah, let's just go straight to the point. Please tell me that. 10 steps. Sure, here are 10 steps you can follow as a new programmer to learn web development. I like this one because it's giving us a list with like markdown formatting, you know, bold and italicized texts. This one's going to be a lot more practical advice. Again, these things kind of, they call it hallucinating or they kind of say things that seem sensical, but if you look at the details, maybe something's out of alignment or, but generally, if you look at the general the gist of it, I think these are good advice you know keep learning so yeah use these as your personal assistant paste them in here I've been using them for a lot of tasks, actually. Generating ideas, coming up with content, proofreading things that I write, or improving or expanding on. Like I might have like a list of some general points I want to make, and I c you can ask it to, um, to write some, to expand on those points, synthesize them. And of course, everything it says, you should really pay attention and make sure it's correct. Check the facts if you're going to use it check that it is saying what you want to say what you would say to somebody else lots of caveats here these are your these are the good advice from the ai and uh it really starts the key one takeaway i would say is make something that's my biggest thing i studied coding for a long time read about it but not i didn't really learn anything it didn't stay in my mind until i started like making stuff Oh, so I'm going to do this. <laughs> cool beans. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to have a little break, though, because right now in this example, I'm facing a bit of an ambiguous task. I don't want to count something. I just want a way to group with subgroups. 
Ah, but hey, let's let's see. Um, so I kind of got it here, but let me just move this all out. And what we're gonna do is ask ChatGPT. I'm gonna put a really big description here. Uh, so. Here we are. Create a list of all. Well, that was correct. That was correct. <laughs> oh no, I lost it. By year. Document type and meeting. Yes. This is an example. I'm sort of, this is done by artificial intelligence. Yes, AI education program. Show people how they can use this in their daily lives to improve their lives, save time, do work on their behalf. We really need to shape this technology to serving humanity and respecting the technology, uh, of course, is important that's why i'm polite no but just kidding but uh, well generally but uh, there is some reverence we should uh, have when we're working with these types of things where did my in block go i lost my in block because there it's a bit dangerous but also super powerful all right now let's see if it can if it can kind of i probably have too much context in here oh my gosh Look at this, it just did it. Let's see if this works. Let me delete my thing here. I didn't write any of that. I hit the tab key. I wrote, I didn't even write this. It kind of knew what I was trying to do. <laughs> it works <laughs> it works but just with one year why is there like some lazy loading thing and it's this one weird one that was this one was bothering me on the content import uh, this one had like missing tag and stuff oh one thing i notice What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop them all. Oh, this probably is it. Let me just double check here. Yeah, what time is it where you are, Absolute? It's just now 8.30, 8.40 here. I didn't write any of that. That was crazy. I mean, I was trying to write that. Okay. Um, documents, models, meeting document, 1.38 p.m. Okay, cool. Are you in the States? The Americas? Are you in the Americas? Like North, South America? What is my... Objects. Objects. All. Delete. I think this is going to work, actually. I think this code is correct. My data is somehow messy. New York. Very cool. New York. How do, they, how do you say it? I can't remember. New York. 
I've not been in the States in a while. I don't, I can't do even an impersonation. I'm from Kansas originally though. <clears throat> all right, we're deleting all the documents. Maybe there were some duplicate documents. Something was going wrong there. But if I rerun this importer, this is correct. So I've got 2020 is H2. H3, the meeting and the category is H4 with an owner or list of documents therein. Even the links, I mean, everything, the whole thing is correct. So yeah, you don't have to, this is the cool thing is you don't have to like so much learn to code now. You have to learn to sort of tell computers what you're trying to achieve and have them help you with that. And move to a higher level of actualization and move to a higher level of intention, what you're trying to manifest. Yeah. You can focus on the interesting bits, the creativity. Ah, okay, so everything got deleted here. Command D. But yeah, it, it can't really create without you in the pilot seat in a way. You got to kind of have an idea and a vision where you're trying to take it. Otherwise, it'll just get this echo chamber of just random computer generated stuff and chatbots chatting with chatbots, which is vi it's happening now, probably. Weird reality that that would create. Yeah, so kind of a balance between the two. Let me go back to my importer. We'll just run this again. While this is running, I'm just going to take a quick break, get some water. I'll be right back. Okay, we did get an error here, and I can fix it. I think I can recover from this. Basically, this is an internal wagtail thing. Uh, it's a Python package called Treebeard, which helps us organize things in a tree, into trees. And wagtail uses Treebeard so that it can uh, create a content model. All the content in wagtail starts with a root node and has children, and they branch. And so, somehow internally it keeps track of statistics about the tree like how many children a particular node has and so this is having troubles with those statistics and what i think i need to do is delete this page and then recreate it i just encountered this one in the past i don't you know this is kind of an error i'm not sure how ai would help us recover from so you just got to be able to sort of navigate some of these things i suppose all right, so where is that? This is, by the way, what the Wagtail CMS looks like in the back end. And we are working with the underneath the home page, which is called welcome page. I turn on localization. Probably shouldn't have done that here. We're going to delete this meeting documents page and recreate that real quick. And that way, when I run the importer, hopefully that weird error will be resolved. It's an edge case error. It's because I ran that delete right beforehand. I was in the shell and I deleted a bunch of child documents. Probably should have done some kind of a bulk action now that I think of it. Uh, this is a, a new thing in Wagtail. This I think bulk actions is relatively new. Uh, but what we're going to do is add a child page, meeting document index page. Meetings are just like gatherings of a bunch of Quakers in Western United States, Northern Mexico. I th 
think that's the extent of it. There we go. You've got to mix the human intention and experiences. That's what makes the program itself. Yeah, that makes sense. Otherwise, yeah. Because as we know them, at least machines can't experience. They're not conscious or cognizant, sentient, far from sapient. And they emulate human speech, basically, currently, as we understand these language models. Some, um, some of these language models are passing pretty advanced tests. You could even almost say Turing level tests. And what's the other one that um, it's the extension of the Turing level test, which uh, comes from a movie that basically if you Turing level Turing test is like you would interact with an artificially intelligent system and you couldn't distinguish it from being a human. But there's another layer of the test, like the Julia test or something like that, that says you would interact with an artificially intelligent um, system knowing it was artificially intelligent but then couldn't distinguish it from sentient being. Uh, yep. Yeah. Some like Turing Julia test. Turing test. See also, maybe just see also. Uh, movie. Ah, might be able to find it. But here's the two ring test just for what it's worth. You've probably heard of this one. Yes, that's a good point because, I mean, yeah, with these deep fakes and stuff like that, uh, it's getting harder and harder to distinguish. I'll show you an interesting one. <laughs> In how obvious it is to distinguish. But this is really a funny one and quite actually interesting called AI Jesus. That's been on the front page of Twitch. It's so popular right now. Let me see if, if AI Jesus is there under just chatting. Usually just chatting. Super popular. Yeah. No, not top in the list right now. <laughs> it's just a, oh, called Ask Jesus. Now they renamed it. It's just a um, an AI model, lang large language model with a video feed that loops. It's a small loop, but they... The chatters ask it questions, and it has text to speech based on the output of the language model. That's again trained on like biblical uh, knowledge, and some of the advice and perspectives it gives us quite. It's like uncanny. It's cool. I'm learning like about <laughs> the Christian and teachings of Jesus through sometimes humorous anecdotes and questions that. These uh, chatters, oops, I hit the wrong one. Let me see, somehow this didn't get, ah, oh, I see what I did wrong. So yeah, I was just watching it the other day for some time and people are trying to, you know, troll a bit, but also asking legitimate like life questions and sometimes getting some interesting advice. You can obviously tell it's not a person in this case, but they're getting, the models are getting more difficult to distinguish. That leads us to this other test, if I can find it. X machine, I think is a machine, however you say that. Actually, why don't we just watch it? Another interesting thing is that you, the answers you can get from the AI, they can be very pointed and very direct. And um, they don't have all the other garbage, like advertisements. <laughs> and cookies.
pop-ups. Subscription boxes. So let's go back to Hugging Face. I'm probably not gonna be able to, actually, yeah, I might be able to solve this today, but I think I'm on like a good stopping point. <laughs> what time is it? One thirty. Okay, multi hypothesis during test. Is that the case? There was a simpler, it was named after like the, the X match machine, machinist star. That's. So this might be more hallucinated. Hmm. Yeah, I couldn't find that one. That's another thing that needing to train needs to do. This is interesting. I'll try this in the chat GPT. ChatGPT says, the test you're referring to is called the reverse Turing test or the AI identification test. In this test, the roles are reversed compared to the original Turing test. Instead of trying to determine if a machine can exhibit intelligent behavior indistinguishable from a human, the goal is for a human to, to identify whether they are interacting with a machine or another human. The person is aware that they are interacting with an AI and attempts to discern its non human nature based on the response to its behavior. This Test. Uh, this test attempts, aims to evaluate the AI's ability to simulate human-like intelligence and determine if it can convince humans of its artificial nature. What movie character is that? Uh, nope. Anyway, it was something on Hacker News. How do you know it's not legit and fake? Yeah, that's a good question. And that gets into like the fundaments of like what is truth, right? Uh, and is truth binary? Generally not. Yeah, a lot of it's intuition. Yeah, and that's kind of the, the you've heard of the uncanny valley effect sort of. They probably even said it in here. It's, you know, one county valley uh, for a simulacrum of a human, um, typically. But then we get into uncanny valleys of truth. I think you can have something that s feels truthy, but then it's kind of like a little bit off, but not like extremely false. <laughs> it's somewhere in the weird zone. Yeah. I think it's coming from the name of this m movie. Mm, Ava, the Ava test. Uh, hey, another Ava. Hey, there's Jasmine here. Did that bot give us a ex machina pun earlier? Hugging face bot. Okay, so we got everything working. Got the thing. I should have been doing that while we were off on our little explorations. I think we need quality. Yes, and who <laughs> quality? Have you read uh, Motorcycle Diaries? Whole book on quality. Uh, isn't isn't the order of motorcycle maintenance actually? Not, not motorcycle diaries. Is Shea Guevara? Is it in? Maintenance. 
things. Try to check this one out. I haven't read it in a while. There's like maybe a TLDR on that one. It goes into really depth on like what quality is. Maybe too much depth on what quality is. Definitions of quality. As far as I recall, he got really hung up on quality. And it's interesting, these uh, search engines are now getting these AI tools in there as well. Safety is all the best, always the best thing for the world. Yeah, and how do we uh, promote safety with these? Particularly with like the misinformation that these things, these AI can produce. You know, even Google Maps giving you wrong directions. I lived in uh, this r rural community. And at least I've heard anecdotes of this. I think it happened where we lived too. Where Google Maps kept routing people through this really remote area that there would have washouts and other road conditions that it was just not passable. The road wasn't passable and potentially dangerous. And the technology is just like, yep, that's the way to go. And people are like, all right, here I'm going. You know, you don't really know when the technology is so confident, this is the correct way. And you've come to trust it because it's right so many other times. It's giving you the right advice or information. Ethical hack hackers, yeah, the hats of hackers. So you would be like a white hat or gray hat hacker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gray hats are on the the fringe. Are you spell it gray or G R E Y or G R A Y. Yeah, but you wouldn't want to be a black hat, maybe a red hat. Yeah. All right, almost imported. Whew, everything went smoothly that time. Now, if we hop over and, and run the server again, I think I, I think that's all I need to do is just run the server, uh, check in the background. The meeting documents page now should list a bunch. I'll add some columns here. Let's add these columns. Well, I'm just going to check this page, so I'm super excited. Uh, page meeting document. It's work, please work. All right. Is the database query too heavy? I don't know. So I'm just going to have to come back to. That's okay. Uh, let me just real quick add a couple of fields so I can inspect the data a bit better. So if we look at the meeting document model admin, we're just displaying the title. Let's look at also the well, publication dates. All right. Publishing meeting is what I was after. Uh, document type? Sure. What else? What else? Go pilot. There we go. We got some stuff. Uh, and there's a way I can get a little nice filter. This filter. That should be publication date. And uh, document type. Mm, yeah, live, I suppose. And we'll get a couple of widgets over here. I can read this. I am building a website. That's going to host a lot. It's already up. This, I'm basically taking an existing website. This is built with Drupal CMS, which is a P3 
PHP based CMS. I'm porting everything over to Python and Django and Wagtail CMS. I've been doing this project for five years now. Actually, what I thought would be five months. Oh, oh no, five years. And I'm at a specific place in this big project. I'm looking at one page right here. I'm kind of trying to reproduce that here. It's just not happening. Don't quite know why. Maybe I'll ask ChatGPT to read GPT itself. All right, so now we've got some stuff. So, I mean, the content is good. All the data. There. And by the virtue of having the years, I know that those documents are there. Some reason. Code is just not working. GPT. It's not a white. Give me everything. So let's just go back to this and see what that did. Yeah, I mean, not at all what I asked for here, but that just goes to show you that all the data are there. I don't know if that'll work. I need to dictionary sort some stuff. It's not working. Get it back to the way it was written. I think this is like close. My only other option really is just to uh, do it in a database aggregation. Create a list of all meeting documents grouped by year, document type, and meeting. The year should be H2, document type H3, meeting H4. Document title should be a link to the document. Wow, that was a great description. No, that was completely off. Honestly, it did really good the first time. I think, you know, what it had was all that context down below, which this regrouping stuff, which I got rid of, it had it in here. And so my results changed drastically. Huh, interesting. Yeah, the Jesus thing is funny and interesting, isn't it? Uh, I'm using Wagtail CMS. It's a content management system it's built uh, in Python and Django. 
which means it's like on a really stable and mature foundation and continually evolving. Uh, and it, Python is a very human friendly language, very rich ecosystem. It's not without warts and imperfections, but it's like probably the, my favorite language. And Dart would be like probably the, my next favorite language. Content management system just gives you an interface to manage, to define content, like structure it and manage that like with point and click stuff and upload you know, images, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, Dr uh, Django doesn't give you sort of a content management system out of the box. So Wagtail builds on top of Django. Django gives you this web foundation of all the things like interacting with the database, routing things, rendering templates, authentication. It's giving you a whole lot. And Wagtail just builds on that, the, the unique parts. It's pretty easy to get started with Wagtail and uh, I've had a great experience working with it. Yeah, so I don't think I'm going to be able to solve this today. Fortunate. What if I could just work a bit at a time? If I could just get the meeting level to work, that would be great. So I take all that. Let's get the meetings to display. That here. All right. So the first thing, I'm, first place I'm going wrong here. That's the. Thing. So this is a wagtail thing. I have to reference the specific page instance. <clears throat> Let's see if there's just anything there. Looks like I might not have any data. If I just put like a generic meeting paragraph there, there's nothing there. So this regroup is not working. Can you regroup inside of a regroup? Or Django multi-level regroup? Leaving the aggregation tab open. No, that's a computed field, basically. Can you regroup or regroup? It worked one with one document for some strange reason. I like DuckDuckGo, but the dang results.
Alright. I want to generate summary values. The aggregate Django aggregate framework is focused on summarizing. I don't want to summarize. I don't want a minimum value, or maximum value, or count. I don't want any of that. What we might do is switch over to the database layer. Oh. I want to do this in a way that's performant. Not too many queries. Hmm. Strangely, that worked. The problem is I don't have the dictionary sort. Okay. So, for example, a PY Pacific Yearly Meeting has a pistol, photo is a pistol. That's, I can just fix that. And there might be Pacific Yearly Meeting, Pacific Yearly Meeting. So, we do need the group sort, the dictionary sort. All right, all right. <laughs> but this is like what I'm after. That was actually pretty fast. Three seconds. The dictionary sort. I'm gonna slow it down though. See, Do you need the dictionary sort? If you even have like a space, maybe that's what I had a space somewhere. By meeting. So we got the years are good to go. What if in the model I change this order by ordering? It's in, it's in, the, it's in the list. Can I do this? Wait. 
then document type, right? What am I doing over right? here? Meeting document type. Can we do, can we do that? Title, no, I don't need it, but that's good advice. Good advice. Make migrations. server Let's see if these just database sorting approach works no. all right so if we use dictionary sorts I'll leave the sorting in there but Need to device. Can not have a space? Uh, oops. Dictionary sort these by publishing meeting. This is where it's going to break, I think. Yeah, right there. Hmm. Running a filter, dictionary sort of filter. Needed to reach into that model. This is a relationship. The, uh, yeah, the meetings are it's a relationship. Yes. So I just get a property from the actual meeting document. Okay. Uh, yeah. So then where we had document, uh, uh, regroup meeting documents, dictionary sort. Oh, oh. I'm after dictionary sort. Just uh, this is a direct property. Epistle minute photo, very cool. And we're just going to deal with that sorting alphabetically. I'm adding a couple of bootstrap classes. Margin start uh, two and four widths of an M. So we get kind of this nesting. Uh, I did it wrong though. Want this H4 to have it and H3 to open this. So it's kind of a little bit of a tree thing. It's kind of hard. The, the text is a bit dense, but that makes it a little bit easier. And then this UL also can be MS five. That way we get the full swing. Oh, too much. 
I guess it's baseline is uh, wherever the header is. That was a small detail. I mean, I got this to work and with chat GPT basically. I'm getting tired. And we're pretty good. And that page load time is not too bad. If I rerun that and check out Django debug toolbar, it'll give me the full timer. Whoa, wrong button. Okay. Mm. Not bad. And I think this just has some server side parsing. It's passable though. The 2.5 seconds total, I guess. Two and a half seconds. Not too bad. This is the actual um, data. So. We're not going to see a whole lot more than this. Uh, the other thing is these are lowercase, though so they should actually be displayed. Just up a little bit more. Now I'm getting kind of detail oriented that the thing is actually working. It feels good that it works. Uh, so the meeting is good. The document type. Um, How did I do that before with these categories? Well, what I can do is use a template filter. Mm. Okay, get display. Yeah, that's what I'm doing wrong here. Get something display. So whatever the field name is, there's a helper that's added on there. If I say get document type display and we'll have the this is the value that gets stored in the database it's all lowercase and then we have a display value that it shows to the user which is capitalized and uh, not capitalizing insignificant words wow oh, wow got it to work it's first pass we're gonna, we're gonna have this reviewed This should almost be pluralized, but I'm not going to go for it. How can you ex help me with this? You'd like experience too. Well, very cool. I appreciate the offer for help. Um, well, the code is open source on GitHub. What you can do, and I can help you with this, is go here to our issues and check out the good first issues. These are the ones that I think are relatively small. I put a lot of emphasis on that relatively small. It's even hard to get a development environment running sometimes. So um, check some of these out. Um, if you have it, if you have an interest in any of them, you can add a comment, say, Hey, I would like to try this. You just go to the issue and say, Hey, can I, can you assign me to this? Um, if you're having other generic problems, you can go to our discussions here, open one up. This right now, this project is my focus. I need to, we want to launch this. I've been developing it for five years. We want to launch this uh, this year, hopefully by August. If not, it's like, man, really a bummer. So any help here would be much appreciated. This is where I'm trying to focus 80% of my free time coding time I do some music and stuff but I've even been doing this instead of music so yeah made a lot of changes here model and stuff I'm just gonna commit these in one fell swoop these were essentially about the sorting in context uh, so I for the model, well, it's a 
these lines. I should put it I should put an index on the document type. We're at least filtering on that. Yeah, and I I work with a lot of times with new developers for many years now actually. And uh, so a uh, part of this Code Buddies community. So yeah, don't hesitate to like no stupid questions. I'm uh available to help. As long as the help is focused mainly towards this WF website right now, I have to kind of turn away other other questions uh, and another in other open source. I can't just kind of my capacity is very limited right now. But the kind of things you learn with this Django, Python, Wagtail, that's going to give you gen general programming experience. A little bit of lint in it up for me. The code, the tools, and the AI should all should support our work and our ambitions and our vision. Uh, so try to adopt those tools that are going to make you more efficient and effective where you have the choice. Okay, let me see. What is this? There's something weird here. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to add one more index on the um, document type. querying on that a bit. Born key fields, A get an index. Very cool. Thanks. I appreciate your offer and uh, really hope to see you on the stream too. You know, feel free to hop in here anytime you see me streaming. I'm not sure. I guess I can stream around this time a little bit earlier. Usually this is getting towards like where I'm winding down in the evening usually. And uh, we can do some pair programming. Yes. All right. Well, I think we're good to go. If I rebuild index matter, but uh, update it. Update index is what it is. All right. Syncing these changes to GitHub. Pushing things up. Yeah. If you can, I recommend getting this VS code. And there's a plugin here you can get um called live share where is that where's live share right there and that actually gives us a real easy way to pair program 
I can like load a project in mine, send you a live share link. You can like hop into this session that's running on my computer, see the code, watch me type, see the changes on your screen. You can even type and run the thing like it was locally running. You could then go here and access these pages and stuff. It's pretty rad. So yeah, if you grab this VS code and the VS code live share extension, let me know. And in the next session, you can, we can try it out, see if we can collaborate a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty fun actually. Do pair programming with his live share. Very cool. So did I give the uh, votes there and there? It sort of was what was after a little bit. Not quite. All right, server is offline. I'm going offline. Pull request is here. Getting a bit heavy. Not passing my lint. Oh no. Sonar Cloud. Oh, duplication. That's one thing. There's going to be a lot of duplication. I'm going to disable that. Because of the nature of using models with similar fields, I'm, I'm using interface and similarities in code so that I can have con consistency. And uh, that means things look similar, but they're actually not. Ah, but anyway, this is another story. Okay, this has been another wagtail django python live coding hangout thank you absolute for being so talkative and have uh, it's been great to hang out and explore questions and topics you've been raising it's nice to have company while figuring out these challenging problems and have a break sometimes when I feel a little bit overwhelmed like my my patience starts to <laughs> uh, go out my ears and my brain is like getting full with information and thoughts and I kind of need to let that out and explore other topics like GPT and large language models career advice how to get started programming all these things have been really nice to talk about hope to see you around have a great day